During World War II, the German military employed a wide array of half-track vehicles, each designed for specific battlefield roles, but why did they invest in so many different models, while nations like the United States streamlined their designs? Stay with us as we explore the reasons behind this diversity and compare the German and American approaches. The primary German half-track was the SD KFZ 251, introduced in 1939. This versatile vehicle served multiple purposes, from transporting infantry to specialized tasks such as engineering and reconnaissance missions. It was the most widely produced German half-track, with over 15,000 units built. It had numerous variants, including versions equipped with rocket launchers, command equipment, and flamethrowers. It was the backbone of the Panzer Grenadiers, allowing them to fight alongside tanks in mechanized assaults. Alongside the 251 was the SD KFZ 250, a lighter half-track primarily deployed for reconnaissance missions. Its compact design allowed for faster movement, making it ideal for scouting and command roles. Over 6,600 of these vehicles were produced, and like the 251, it had multiple specialized variants. Key versions included the SDKFZ-253, used as a command vehicle with advanced radio equipment, and the SDKFZ-259, which was equipped with a 20mm autocannon for additional firepower. The SDKFZ-6 was another notable half-track, designed to tow artillery like the 10.5cm LEFH-18 howitzer and support engineering units with heavy equipment. However, production numbers were limited, with only around 3,500 units built, as it was deemed too large for light rolls and too small for heavier towing needs. Some were later modified into self-propelled gun platforms, such as the SDKFZ-62, armed with a 37mm flak anti-aircraft gun. The SDKFZ-7 was a medium-weight half-track vehicle, initially designed as an artillery tractor for heavier German guns, such as the 8.5cm flak gun and the 15cm SFH-18 howitzer. However, it also found use as a recovery vehicle for troop transport and even as an anti-aircraft platform when equipped with a flak gun. With approximately 12,000 units produced, it became a key asset in German logistics and artillery deployment. Some variants, like the SD KFZ-71, were fitted with quad 20mm anti-aircraft cannons, making them formidable threats to Allied aircraft. The SD KFZ-9, also known as the FAMO, was the heaviest German half-track vehicle. It was essential for recovering damaged tanks and transporting heavy equipment. Only around 2,500 were produced, but they were invaluable for maintaining Germany's armored divisions. Some were even fitted with cranes for battlefield repairs, such as the SDKFZ-9-1, which carried a 10-ton crane for lifting tank engines and turrets. Germany's approach led to the development of numerous specialized half-tracks, including SDKFZ-10, a small towing vehicle for anti-tank and anti-aircraft guns. SDKFF-11, used primarily for transporting troops and supplies. An 
SD KFZ-8, a powerful artillery tractor for the 17cm Canoni 18. Why did Germany produce so many different models instead of streamlining their designs? The main reason was Germany's fragmented production system. Unlike the United States, which had large-scale centralized manufacturing, Germany relied on multiple manufacturers, each producing their own variants based on changing battlefield needs. Additionally, Germany focused on specialized vehicles to perform distinct roles rather than modifying a single base model. This resulted in high logistical complexity but allowed for customized battlefield solutions. In contrast, the United States adopted a strategy of standardization with the M3 half-track. Instead of developing multiple distinct models, they focused on a single base design that could be modified for various roles. The M3 half-track served as a troop carrier, mortar carrier, command vehicle, and even as an anti-aircraft platform. Variants such as the M16 multiple gun motor carriage featured quad-mounted 50 caliber machine guns while the M4 mortar carrier transported an 81mm mortar. By maintaining a single chassis, the United States ensured rapid production with over 40,000 units built. This approach allowed for easier logistics, maintenance, and mass production efficiency. The differing strategies in half-track development during World War II highlight the balance between specialization and standardization. Germany's varied designs offered customized battlefield solutions, but at the cost of logistical complexity. Meanwhile, the American focus on standardization facilitated mass production and operational efficiency. Which strategy do you think was more effective, and which do you think was the most effective or impressive half-track of World War II? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching.